decisions on trafficking in persons turn out. A lot of things crisscross and overlap. Migrational issues will come in. In fulfilling the international obligation under the Trafficking in Persons Protocol to prevent, suppress and uh, punish trafficking in persons, the Nigerian government established the National Agency for the Prohibition in Trafficking in Persons and uh, it was also in response to this within the country. That would be the focus to the NAPTIP. What has NAPTIP really done so far? We are not going to talk about what is NAPTIP established to do, but where are they now and inching forward where are we going to be maybe in the nearest future? My guest is the Director General of that agency, Julie Okadone, expire. Thanks for joining on Insight. Thank you very much. Well, like I said, we are not here to say what is to doing, where have you been, but first of all, let me say, how are you settling in? Well, I'm settling in very fast. I think I'm beginning to come to terms with um, the operations of the agency and um, I'm taking it from there. Okay. Now, we, you are dealing with very complex, deep-seated uh, network, talking about the people, the publics of uh, NAPTIP, which is the traffickers, security agencies, internal, outside the country, and it's a strong network. How are you handling this? Well, the truth is that um, NAPTIP works with other law enforcement agencies, as we cannot do this alone. So we work with um, the National Immigration Services, the NDLEA, and the Nigerian police. We also work with the police in these other countries where trafficking takes place. So we share information and um, we, we kind of work as a joint task force. So it makes it easier for us to control trafficking to some considerable degree. Okay, because wh why I'm coming from, you will be surprised I'm coming from here. The racket, the trafficking racket in persons is as almost, almost stronger than the trafficking racket in drugs. What is that thing you are going to do differently to really surmount this challenge? Well, if, the cart if that cartel is broken, then it's good as you are almost 80% done with your responsibility. Absolutely. Um, what we're trying to do differently is to focus more on prevention. Because, I mean, like you said, if we prevent this from happening in the first place, then our job is 80% done. And that's the strategy we try to adopt this time around. So in that regard, we plan to have massive awareness campaigns cut across the 36 states of the Federation, including Abuja, and all the local government areas. All the major stakeholders are going to come together. The, go the governors, the local government chairman, we're going to bring in the NYSC, we're going to bring in senators, House of Rep members, we're going to bring in the community leaders, we're going to talk to the church leaders, the mosque leaders. So it's a total package, and it's going to involve everybody, including the media, which is what we are doing now. Okay, now, a few hours, call it about 16 hours before it came on this program, there was breaking news uh, that 50 migrants on the Sahara Desert heading towards Europe, and they said that was the main route for migra illegal migrants from Africa. And by the last count, they said the migrants who died came from Nigeria, the Gambia, Senegal, and Côte d'Ivoire. Now, by the records, you realize that in percentage, Italy, Turkey, Libya, Nigeria ranks very, very high. It's quite a disturbing figure there. Given the circumstance, back to the ring, you can't go to the strategies you're doing in Nigeria, is you find those you're dealing with outside the country, those you're dealing with inside the country having a synergy, yet what they're doing as is an illegality. When the migrants or this person's traffic are returned back to the country, how do you handle them? Good. When they are returned to the country, we first of all profile them. The Nigeria Immigration Services help to profile them because not everyone who comes back are victims of trafficking. Like you said, we have illegal immigrants as well. Some of them served time in prison. Some of them, you know, did some criminal activities. But pretty much they are all illegal immigrants in the various countries in Europe. So when they come back, the, the, the profiling is done. 
we at NAFTIC concern ourselves with those victims of trafficking okay. and the traffickers because sometimes the traffic the victims of trafficking identify traffickers that are returned with them so when that happens we take the victims of trafficking with us as well as the traffickers but the truth is that most of the time when you are an illegal immigrant in these countries it also leads to trafficking because people take advantage of the fact that you do not have papers to work with you do not have the uh, permits to stay in such countries so they are easily trafficked mm -hmm. you know so that is why like one easily relates to the other and they they, they are all sometimes Frank, used interchangeably yeah, they are giving the yeah. direction now yeah and they are back you prefer them and they are back in the country yes trafficking is like uh, somebody who's addicted to drugs are you sure they don't go back to it well sometimes the victims of trafficking are re-trafficked you know, I want to make a distinction between the victims of trafficking and the illegal immigrants who come back. Most of the time, those illegal immigrants who come back, go back because they are usually intercepted. For example, you, 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 you mentioned Libya. They are usually intercepted in Libya. They haven't reached their destination point. Libya is the transit country. So they have not reached their destination point. They have not yet achieved their dream. So when they are accosted and brought back, they still want to go back because their final destination is Europe. And for the victims of trafficking, when they come back, sometimes they are easy targets for re-trafficking because they don't have jobs. They don't have money. And they begin to think, perhaps, maybe I should just go again. Sometimes they don't even know that they are going to be re-trafficked. And most of the time, they are deceived into thinking, oh, don't worry, we'll get you a good job. You know, don't worry, you know, this time around, we'll get it right. So they, most of the time, victims of trafficking are deceived. Okay. Yeah. I can be sure as we speak, so many families are holding prayer sessions, fasting sessions for one or two of their children, siblings, words to proceed as we speak illegally or to be trafficked while they have been convicted. Do you think without an enabling legis legis legislation, maybe to meet this on the board, for instance, someone was trafficked to a victim is back in the country, and maybe you find out that there was consent by the parents before the person was taken out of the country. If there's a legislation to, to punish families of mothers, fathers, who lure their children out to be trafficked, Will you not check it? I'm surprised you're talking about legislation. That's why we have NAPTIP and we have the TP Act. Because that's exactly what we do. That's well, what I'm the legislation this, is it's about. A, it's as though the people who send this people out are not being taken to, to, to anywhere. That's not true. You know, we work with evidence. We work with information. Okay. If we investigate and we find out that you are a trafficker, You'll be prosecuted and convicted. Of course, we've, we've got, I mean, from the time NAPTIC started till date, we've been able to secure about 326 what about the father convictions. Who aided this person? Oh, yes, if they are the traffickers, of course, they'll be prosecuted. Are you have cases like that? Oh, we have cases where someone else came and deceived the mother into thinking they were giving the children some good jobs and then took them away. But of course, if we have cases where the mother of anyone is involved, be it the mother or father, we'll definitely arrest and then prosecute. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. So that takes me, I, I just wanted to establish that because it's quite uh, a traumatizing thing. Of course you're, it is. You're, you're in a job to ensure that people don't get misled mm -hmm. out of the shots of Nigeria, maybe for greener pastures, and the person goes there only to discover that maybe their parents on grounds of maybe want to, uh, looking for greener pastures or maybe you think it's better off there. And they, maybe they are working free at the detriment of what you're trying to achieve for Nigeria. Yeah. Okay, moving on now. You were talking about having a synergy, robust awareness in Nigeria. Yeah. How do you intend to go about this? I already told you that all, all hands will be on deck. All stakeholders will be involved yeah. in the fight against um, trafficking. It's just going to be an awareness uh, campaign that involves everybody, every Nigerian. What model are you going to adopt? Well, you know, when it comes to creating awareness, there's a lot of media that is involved in this. We are going to adopt the media strategy, that's the television, the radio, 
the papers, we are going to have billboards, we are going to have um, be, um, flyers, you know, to educate people. We are also going to have um, presentations done, you know, uh, different, we are going to adopt different, we are going to have posters, we are going to just, you know, adopt all sorts of jingles, radio jingles, television jingles, we are going to involve the uh, orientation agency and NCA and other um, television stations. So it's, it's mostly going to be a media thing. We are also going to have um, like in, an interactive session with various uh, uh, stakeholders. For example, we plan to have a session with the airline operators to tell them what to look out for because these are most of the time these are places they pass through. We are going to also have um, interactive sessions with those border communities and their, 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 their village heads or their district heads or their leaders, the youth leaders and all of that. It's going to be just, you know, we are, we are, we are leaving those stones on turn. It's going to be massive. You okay. know? When you want to take the stakeholder group analysis for mapping is wide. Very but wide. you have CBOs, NGOs doing what you are doing in their own way. Have you been able to have a good compendium of them? Oh, yes. We have a directory of the NGOs that we work with. They are actually registered with NATIP and we work Not together. NGOs? We no, 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 no. These are envelopes NGOs. that have been trusted, <laughs> tested, and have been investigated. And we know what they do. And uh, we work with them together. For example, when we start this awareness thing, NAPTIP is not going to do it alone. We are going to engage with all of these uh, NGOs and give them areas to concentrate on. For example, we can say, okay, we are going to do a um, awareness campaign. Take care of these four states. You take care of two states. Take care of three. And that's how we are going to you know, use them to make sure that we all come together and achieve our, our aims and objectives. Okay, let's take Gerard Angle. Some persons are trafficked. Uh, maybe for prostitution mostly, not for labor. Maybe the, the labor own has some dignity in it because you're going to go and work hard. And now they are back. People get to know oh, he or she went for prostitution. How do you handle the psyche of them when they come back? Yeah, when the... Um, avoid the issue of stigmatization and what have you. Yeah, when these um, people like that come back, we counsel them. We give them good counseling until we are satisfied that their, their sanity has been restored. We, we make them to believe in themselves, you know, and to forget about the past because victims are not treated as criminals. And they are victims and not criminals. So we treat them with so much respect and we try to restore their dignity to them. Having said that, after all that is done, we now begin to rehabilitate them by teaching them some skills, you know, and then um, skills of their choice. Some of them may say, well, I want to learn catering, I want to do sewing, I want to make beans. I Just want to even students. go to school. Yes, of course, we have so many. Some may even say, I even want to go to the school, go back to school. And we have some who have graduated. We also have some who are even in the university as we speak. Okay. So we do that, and then we slowly reintegrate them back, you know. So do you tend to adopt the change aging modern in this your awareness campaign? As in, um, for instance, you say you want to go and talk to a group of young people in a rural community, and you take one of these testimonies to be the one to talk to them. We've been doing that for long. It's, not, it's not new. Yeah, yeah, we take one of them to come to. We did. We go to schools. We go to universities. We have seminars where we have victims who are, are, are who, who now come and talk to people and share their experiences with them because you know it it it, it works better when someone who was a victim before comes out to share his or her experience and say, look, I was there. It happens to me. People now, you know, take a listen and like, okay, let's listen to this person. It happened to you and they now, they now start to believe, you know. Yeah, we do that. What's your network like? Is it just a local network talking about these guys you have identified who are working with you, who are doing similar things to the non-governmental side? Do you also have identified ones outside the shores of Nigeria? Um, so far, it's mainly local, but we have one or two international NGOs that partner with us. Okay. Because I, I came in contact recently with Andres Kalok from, uh, is it uh, Germany? Germany. You're aware of him? Yeah, I know there's one from Germany, there's one from Sweden, 
and I think about three countries, yeah, yeah collaborating with them. Yeah, they are all doing um, what they can do. They are trying, at least in terms of information, okay. when they have information concerning maybe um, um, Nigerians that are stranded somewhere, okay. uh, they, they let us know. We did something recently on networking with Nigeria in the trafficking against persons. And uh, each time the program ran, you get responses and reactions from the public. And one of them came from uh, a man of God somewhere in the Niger Delta saying the challenge they have when they take in these persons and rehabilitate them, sustainability becomes a problem. And you find some of them returning back, allowing them to be re-trafficked. Mm -hmm. Do you have cause to maybe tinker towards assisting these kind of persons to... Yes, that is what would usually happen because when you rehabilitate and you know you try to send them back you need to uh, uh, you, you need to be ready to do this job when you rehabilitate them you counsel them you cannot just say oh go back into the society and prosper you have to give them starter packs to start with. So it's something that is sustainable for them. It's not just about giving them money and say, oh, okay, you can go back to your village. Go back to your village to do what? So if, for example, you train someone how to sew, you must give her the tools with which to work. You must at least be able to rent a shop for a year and then give her the sewing machine and all the necessary tools she needs sure. so that when she starts that business, she now begins to sustain herself going forward. And this is why we want to engage all the state governors because all of those people come from communities. I'm happy you said so. Yes. Now, let me go this road so that you don't cover our time. I need to get this straight. Um, you know, I said, I don't want to go into what is NAPTIP is doing. How many of you are arrested? You have gone past that and you're moving on. You are not a trailblazer in NAPTIP. You succeeded maybe one or two, three and, and teachers who have been there. What is that thing that uh, Julie would do differently while in NAPTIP? Well, what Julie will do differently is to engage all the governors of every state, we will engage all the leaders of communities, we will engage all the bishops of the churches, the imams. We will, we will partner more closely, for example, with the um, Pilgrims um, Board. We will partner because those are places where people are usually, you know, I mean, trafficked easily. We will partner with the Hajj Pilgrim, we will partner with the Christian Pilgrim Board and all of that. We will work more closely. We will work more closely with all the ambassadors and them. What I will do differently this time around is that I'm not going to be satisfied with the European countries sending back the victims to us. I want to tell them in the other side to prosecute their own because if there is no demand and profit in Europe, we will not send our girls from Nigeria. That's a big ring. Yes. So I want the European community to begin to prosecute European networks there that are collaborating with the Nigerians. Because so far it has been a left-sided thing where they send back our victims and they send back our traffickers to us, but we are not hearing anything about the Europeans who are receiving and profiting from it. So this time what I'm going to do different is to see yeah. that that is done. I'm you spoke to the, the, the legal aspect, but you didn't mention the the security agencies from Nigeria, they are key to this. Yeah, I told you that we all work together with all the security agencies okay. in Nigeria. So I, I, imagine as we speak now, like I told you, as we speak together on this program now, some persons have been trafficked out of the country. True. And they go in droves. And by the last statistics, I read somewhere that on the daily basis, about 80 or 800 Nigerians go through the uh, traffic out of the country almost on a daily basis. Now, if I say there are a group of persons that have been arrested who are thinking towards this direction, did you talk to them? What will you be telling them? Imagine you're talking to them now. Well, I want to tell those who are being trafficked now that, you know, when people come to you and they start telling you 
stories of I will take you to London or Spain or Italy uh, to go and play football. I will take you for modeling. I want to sponsor you for Hajj or Christian pilgrimage. Please call Napti. Just run because they are going to traffic you. And the truth is that trafficking has gone beyond sexual exploitation. Now they sell the organs now. It has gone beyond prostitution or even labor, forced labor. They sell organs as much as 400,000 US dollars. I mean, so I mean, you may not even have the opportunity to come back home alive. So please, in case you, anyone offers you any job or anything, please call NAPTIP or go to the nearest security agency to confirm. And for the traffickers, we want to warn you that NAPTIP will come after you. It is time for you to look for a better job because we will definitely come after you and you will go to jail. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It was nice talking with you. Thank and you. we hope and believe that uh, in a matter of time we'll see strides. And maybe, let's say, that difference will play out in a year's time. Am I correct? The grace of God. Okay. DJ, National Agency for the Prohibition and Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIC, Julie Okadoli. It was nice talking with you. Thank you very much. Okay.